Hello EFD squad and welcome back to Continental Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. Today I'm joined by a carton of Tropicana <laughs> and Zach. Jelab, <laughs> how the devil are you, gentlemen? Yeah, very Great. well, thank you. Yeah. Obviously, Hyped. last week we had Michael McCubbin. He's now on his way to the Ivory Coast with Adam Templeman. And you'll be able to follow their journey on Instagram and mm -hmm. make decisions about their day for them. So well worth checking it out. Make sure you're cruel to them. Uh, James, you've not featured in a little while, but you no. saw Manchester City on the script and you've jumped straight in. Yeah, I mean, I like being biased. That's kind of why I'm here. Good. Yeah. <laughs> on the subject of Manchester City, as we started filming, the Champions League draw was held. It was. So we thought, why not kick off the little bit of chatter about the Champions League draw? It is as follows. Barcelona versus Roma. Woo. They haven't played each other in a long time, have they? Sevilla versus Bayern Munich. Mm. Mm. Juventus versus Real Madrid, so grudge match. Last year's final, obviously. And uh, Liverpool, Manchester oh City, God. which I think we're all a little bit disappointed <laughs> with. They've produced great matches in the Premier League this season, but we didn't want the English clubs to draw one another because this looks like an easy tie for Bayern Munich at the very least. Yeah, definitely. And then, who have you got down in the other tie? Zach, lead the charge. I think Boston. Barcelona will be Roma, because yeah. oh my God, were they good against Chelsea. Mm. But it is all down to one man and one man only, Messi. He's just, if you've got him in the squad, You've won the game, basically. He was incredible. I don't think Chelsea played bad against um, Barcelona. No, I thought you were very impressive. Mm. I thought Kante as well was very impressive. Definitely but, missed him in the first leg, oh, didn't yeah. you? Hundred percent. But um, I just—it's unbelievable. Messi, like his the second goal where he does like a faint touch, takes it past Christensen, then takes Aspilicueta down to the left, spots Dembele, puts it over. Dembele's finish was incredible as well. Mm. But then on top of that, it, it's not just that they've got an amazing team. Their defensive line. And Tita was class, PK was class, and their keeper, their stadium, is unbeatable at the moment. Mm. I think that's an easy win. I do think Roma are good, and when I watched Chelsea Roma in Italy, it was an amazing experience. But I just think Roma, a little good. bit different from Roma sides of yesteryear. Mm. Very defensively sound, mm. not scoring so many goals going forward. You say De Francesco has built a solid base in the Eternal City. James, Sevilla versus Bayern. Are we doing Sevilla, who dispatched Manchester United a disservice if we're saying it's a foregone conclusion? No, I, th I think that's that's very fair to say. I mean, Bayern Munich as a team are just outstanding. Jupp Heynckes has done a great job turning them around from their kind of disappointing start at the beginning. Sevilla, although they dispatched Man United, Man United had the weirdest game plan I think I've ever seen in a Champions League game, <laughs> which was, let's just not play. Um, Sevilla themselves weren't that good, although Ben Yedder, when he did come on, mm. you know, four minutes, two goals, I mean, that, that you, you can't get there struggling yeah. for goals. I think Ben Yedder's their top goal scorer in the league with six, and they've only mm. scored 34. And if you're struggling for goals, Bayern aren't the sort of team you want to come up against, yeah, are they? Definitely. I think, yeah, as I was about to say, is, uh, you know, as bad as Man United were, Sevilla, sorry, as bad as Sevilla were, Man United were worse in that game. I think it'll be an absolute turnover by Bayern Munich. Okay, mm -hmm. and that brings us to Liverpool, Manchester City, the only side that have sort of given you a run for yeah. your money it's in the Premier League this season. Yeah, the one side I really didn't want. If, <laughs> if, uh, to be fair, if I wanted, like, at this point in the in the, tie, in the in the competition, I think it's a bit unfair to have this tie. I really wanted it in the final. I think Liverpool are the only team that have really, over, over more than one game, really given us a proper good game. Um, I think if Mane didn't get sent off in that first game, it would have been a completely different tie. I think they would have, you know, as the second tie was, back and forth, so many goals. It's such an exciting game and yeah, I'm a bit disappointed it's come so early. It's because I just think it's because their attack is incredible. Mm. Those front three, Mane, Salah, Firmino, together are just arguably one of the best in the world. Mm. It's ridiculous. Um, when they played you uh, at Anfield, I just, your defence just couldn't really like handle them. And as you said, I think it's the first team this season where like the defence of Laporte, Company, Stones just haven't have an idea on what mm. to do because they're all over, they're all like interchanging, swapping, and it's just ridiculous. I don't know how you would defend that at all. And Liverpool have shored up their defence recently. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. More alarmingly. Yeah. I think when you played them, they were more suspect to conceding mm. these goals. They've got Virgil van Dijk now. Um, I think before they lost to Manchester United, they were unbeaten in 18. So finding that consistency they were missing beforehand as well. 
Um, Karius has improved as well, I think. I think yeah, recently he's that's improved. a fair shout. I think, before, again, before Manchester United, five clean sheets out of his last eight games. So, it's going to be really difficult yeah. for Manchester City. And part of me wanted you to win at least, you know, the double. <laughs> I still just think because of the stick win. that Pep Guardiola got off everyone's, you know, dollars last year. Yeah, I th I th I, it's what well, the thing I find most annoying about this this tie is that um, I wanted to see Liverpool come up against like a Real Madrid or Bayern, yes. as well as yeah. us come against a Real Madrid or Bayern or, or it's Barcelona. A very good sorry, point. Um, they've had easy games as well. Yeah, well. There's, there's, there's about three good games that are now lacking from the from us two playing. Lads, then who do we think is going through? So we all agree <sighs> Barcelona over Barcelona. Yes. Roma. Yeah. Severe Bayern Munich. Bayern. It's got to be the Bavarians. Exactly. Juventus Real Madrid. <laughs> See, that, so difficult. That is going to be, although both sides are inferior or, or sort of pale in comparison to, to how they were last year, um, I think that's going to be a much more interesting tie. Max Allegri over two legs. I think he's going to have the beating of Zidane tactically, so it's just whether. Will Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo show up? That's it. Because I was just thinking... And he has been, hasn't he, mm. recently? Especially in the Champions League. Well, I was League. just thinking, like, Spurs played Real Madrid in the group stages and were better at Wembley. Uh, well, they also bit, uh, did really well at the Bernabeu as well. And then Spurs played Juve and lost to them as well. So I kind of feel Juve might just do it. Mm. They might do it in yeah. some way. Hig uh, Higuain will, I think, be, obviously... Well, not for it because it's his old club, and then the Diabala. This might be the game where everyone's Ooh, like, "Oh, this is the man." Interesting. This is the man who could potentially take over Cristiano Ronaldo's yeah. mantle. I think the Juventus have more bows, strings to their bow. I like what Allegri's done with, with this side. Obviously, when he first took over from Conte, he was still sort of playing that three-five-two yeah. with the attacking fullbacks. But since he's reverted to that four. With Kier, uh, with Kielin at the at the back, almost coming out as a ball carrier on occasions, and Pjanic and Kadira in midfield. Mm. What he does is pretty interesting. Juventus, I've noticed in in recent Champions League games, are quite passive. So they have the same s sort of shape as an Atletico Madrid, mm -hmm. but they don't have that aggressive counter press. Mm. So they let sides come at them. The midfield gets really close to the defence. And uh, you, you see Higuain dropping and dropping and dropping, and he picks up the ball on the halfway line, and alas, he's free because no defender's gone with him because that would break their shape. Yeah. Um, and he's got Mandzukic as that sort of inverted winger, um, the baller just hovering around as that as that number ten. Um, I think they're a more interesting proposition than Real Madrid, who have also reverted to a four-four-two for games in which. Mm. Zidane feels it's going to be a little bit tighter this season. We saw it in the in the last Champions League game. Uh, I, I think I, I want Juventus to go through, yeah, but I don't want Real Madrid to, to, to win a third Champions League yeah. just for the sakes of variety. But I I think Real Madrid will probably do it. I counted them out against the, PSG, the, and I got the fingers burnt. The experience in that team for Champions League, the big oh, games, yeah. they mm. will perform and. I think this is the most difficult tie to, to call because, as you said, Juventus are a very different team now. Uh, very organised. They've given teams that, as you said, uh, Rao struggled with are turning over. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't. I, annoyingly, I can't see anything but a Rao win just because they've they've shown it, especially second half of the season. They, they've they've blossomed and they've mm. really blossomed well. Turning over PSG when everyone. You know, kind of written them off. I think the PSG, uh, as well as Man City, were the favourites going into the kind of the latter stages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they played that four for two I was talking about against PSG with mm. Asensio and Vasquez. So I might be doing Zidane a bit of disservice there, saying yeah. that Allegri switches it up more than he does, because that was quite an interesting evolution. Th but lads, go on then. I think it's going to be CR7's game. You think the it's man just this, this is the game for him. We say it every time. year, don't we? This Literally. could be his last year to win the competition, <laughs> and he continues to defy expectations. That's our discussion about who's gone through. Moving in to the fan questions. First question comes from Jack underscore Ward 44 on Twitter. Thank you for getting it in, pal. And he's asked, will City's season be replicated soon or will this go down as the best title winning season in history? I'm more inclined to think the second part of that question <laughs> yeah. holds true. Manchester City currently projected to finish on 102 points, I believe, which is seven points better than the current record uh, with Chelsea set back in Jose Mourinho's first reign. They've already broke the uh, 
what, set the record for the most consecutive wins as well on 18. Uh, and they've done a lot of other stuff, mm. obviously. You know, the, all those victories and unbeaten streaks entail. James, as a Manchester City fan, what has clicked into place this season? What's happened that didn't happen in Pep's first season? I think it's an understanding of his, of his system itself. Um, you've seen everyone, it, it's very clear what we want to do and we've done it cons uh, consistently over the whole season. Yeah. I think the left back position has kind of shown that more so than anything else because we've had uh, Mendy being injured, I think four games into the Premier League season, out for the whole season, very uh, soon, hopefully coming back. Uh, meant to be a few games, so fantasy. Get that in. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so we've had Delph in that position, we've had Zinchenko, we've had Foden, we've had Danilo. Um, all so these that sort players. of embodies your tactical yeah, flexibility I mean, at this point. I mean, one of those players is a central midfielder. Two of those are young attacking midfielders, and they, playing left yeah, back. and they play left back. And I mean, yes, they you know have been you know moments where they've been messed up, but they're attacking midfielders. You can't expect brilliant performances from them every single time. But that position has been, a, a, you know, would have been a worry for any team not having a consistent left back. But because of his system being so clear to the players, they've managed to mm -hmm. deal with that for the whole season and. Yeah, I, when Mendy was injured, I was extremely worried, thinking that, you know, Danilo will do a good job, but we have one player for that position the whole season. And I've been extremely impressed yeah. by that. Yeah, I think The players been... did that at Bayern as well. Mm. I remember uh, the youngster Hoiberg playing uh, right back when he was a central midfielder in a cup final against Dortmund at one point. Finch um, as well, he? he used to be a midfielder now, he's that uh, mm. right back as well for Bayern. Yeah, or vice, vice versa yeah, as well. But, um, so yeah, so you think it's the players have, have grown to his system and that he's just so adept at f plugging gaps with positive solutions. Yes, basically. definitely. Um, yeah, I think I think you've seen that in in players like Sterling and Sane as well. It's taken a little while to wrap their head around what <coughs> he's actually asking from them, but it's paying dividends now. Exactly. And, and you've got such a competitive front line that that competition as well must breed you know, form. Mm. Uh, Zach, <laughs> what do you make of it? Well, Give your expert, you know, gammon opinion. I say expert, how hilarious. But anyway, <laughs> no, um, I think nothing speaks more than that. Like at the beginning of the season, Sergio Aguero was like, I'm not too sure about this. Like, I want to go back to Independiente. I want to finish my career there. And like, you know, the was obviously started, started from that. But then since then, obviously there was the injury to Jesus, but then he's come back in, he's actually smashed it. He's now City's top goal scorer. He's basically, I think if you're in that City squad, Pep, you, you're happy playing with Pep Guardiola, and if he says you've got to do this role, you're like, okay, yeah, 100%. Fabian Delph, would we have thought, could play left back for Manchester City in, in one of their top games against Chelsea and perform amazingly? Mm -hmm. No, and he's doing it this season for mm. uh, thinking. But um, my only thing, my only negative thing I'd say is that for City playing great against United, against Chelsea, against all these big teams, they have had a few games where they slipped up a little. Crystal Palace, for instance, were lucky not to. Um, lose when, I uh, can't remember the, city, uh, the Palace player, but he missed the penalty. Mahalovic, yeah. Yeah. And then Mahalovic, against yeah. Wigan, they lost to them. But that's a bit more different as like, due to one error from Carl Walker. Yeah. But still, as great they have been, maybe just to like level out and perform consistently consistently against the smaller teams as well, is what I'm saying. It's probably a little bit harsh and they're not performing against the smaller yeah. teams. But I think what you're saying is probably also a frightening prospect for a lot of other football fans in that there is room for improvement in this exactly. city side yeah. <laughs> as good as they are now. Benjamin Le uh, Mendy's going to come back at left back and if he's still the same player, he will be an improvement. Um, you also have, I mean, what, what, what other areas are, are, of the squad are sort of might be invested in this summer. Potentially central midfield. Yeah. Fernandinho is what, 32, 33 now? And though mm. he's improved and added uh, new things to his game season on season, you could probably probably improved by going out and getting a Fabinho or something yeah. well, like even, that. The route, even Kevin De Bruyne has been able to play that role. He's been playing a bit deeper as well in some games. Th no, we've, we've been looking at Fred in the January, but I think we've gone off him apparently. Julian Weigl seems to be, uh, Dortmund's Julian Weigl seems to be the target. Yes. Um, oh. I suppose you Pep's a big fan, so yeah, I, I'd be Could I'd be, be a bit happy. of a Sergio Busquets. Yeah, I'd, I know I'd, he's more of a sort of deep line playmaker. Um, you know, Ember Skets can just do everything, bit of a freak, but he's got that kind of tall frame, hasn't mm -hmm. he? That kind of one-touch style of play. I think that might be really interesting. Who do you think Manchester City should buy to win the league by 50 Even points more. next season? <laughs> Let us know in the comments below.
Next question comes from at Seif underscore star. It's got a bit of a South American flavour to it, lads. He said, or she, if you were Tite, what would your best lineup be for Brazil? Ooh. Let's make this nice and quick. Ooh. Goalkeepers, quickly. I'd go for Roma's Allison has been in incredible form. I agree. I'm just horrendously biased, so I'm gonna say Edison. He's been. He's, he's also extremely good. Yeah, so. either, would, really. Yeah, you wouldn't complain either. with either. Brazil have been missing a pool of good goalkeepers for a number of years now, and all of a sudden they have two worldies in their mm. doorstep. Also Diego Alves in reserve, so I think they're going to be fairly competent on that front. Defenders. Now, a long list of defenders we're playing in Europe to pick from here as well. Alves, Danilo, Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, Miranda, David Luiz. Not really started, has a Jemison, Felipe Luiz, Marcelo, and Alex Ooh. Sandro. Two of probably the best left backs there in the, world, yeah. in the world in one squad. So he's probably going to have his work cut out for him, his old Tite, when he's picking his defence. But personally, I would go for Marcelo. Mm -hmm. I would go for Thiago Silva and Marquinhos at yeah. centre back, which is a pairing I think he's favoured during qualification and probably I'd go for the assured presence of Felipe Luiz over Dani Alves' right, attacking man. output. I don't think Dani Alves is quite... No, he's definitely not. <laughs> not good not enough, great, because that's but... the wrong word, because technically he's still superb, but he's, he's 34 now. I think that traditional right-back role is a little bit too much to ask of him. If he's going to play a right wing-back, different question. Mm -hmm. What about you boys, back yeah. four? I would say the exact same, however, I would put Danny, Danny Alves at right back, mainly because I don't think Felipe Luiz can play on the right as well as he can. Um, Interesting. I would put uh, Danny Alves in the right back position. I'd have the same one as you, but I think uh, Danilo would probably have to chop and change every now and again with him, just because. I don't know, he's on, he's on he's the out, on but, well. but Danilo makes a lot of mistakes, so I wouldn't trust him in that. Right Almost back. in agreement there, then, lads. <laughs> Midfielders. And this is where. TA has kind of surprised people because during mm. qualification he uh, often played Renato Augusto and Paulinho as those sort of pivots um, when they were both playing in China. So <laughs> he clearly doesn't care, you know, for in terms of pedigree. Uh, it's all about system. So the midfielders he has to pick from are Willian, who he also made captain mm. Big for, up. I don't know if it's just for one friendly or... Permanently. Now we took it off Neymar because there was this thing called Neymar dependence. He said that needed to go. The country were too heavily reliant on that's Neymar. That's good. No, that's good. And that's he was lovely. like, "I'm not going to make him captain. Someone else needs to shield some of the, shield some of the responsibility." But Willian, Paulinho, Fernandinho, Augusto, Coutinho, Casemiro, Fred of Shakhtar fame, mm -hmm. Arta, Arta or Arthur, Barcelona probably Arthur. Bound. Yeah, who is Barcelona bound from Gremio? Yep. Mm. Yep. And Felipe Anderson, who of Lazio fame, I believe, who is uh, has been injured for a large part of this season, but had a superb last season. I think he played every minute of Serie A football oh last God. season. Um, okay, do you want to kick us off, Zach? We'll go the okay. way around this time. So we said two, three, one. Okay, I would say you're going to go four, two, three, one. Yeah, four, two, three, one. So you pick your two pivots. Pick first. my two pivots. Oh, either Paulinho, Fernandinho or Casemiro. I think we put Casemiro in there. Yep. And Paulinho to give us more of an attacking output from the two pivots. Okay, cool. A bit more box to box, Paulinho, yeah. yeah. Um, I would go for uh, Fernandinho. Yeah, so I, was, I was waiting for him to go. Uh, waiting for him to go for the three. Um, Fernandinho and Casemiro, easy choices for me. Those two are outstanding players. That's a pretty formidable You're not way getting past to, them. You're not to, yeah, past to them. defend your defence, isn't it? Mm. Fernandinho and Casemiro. Oh, I'd definitely play Casemiro. 100%. Um, all right, I think I'm going to agree with you. Although I'd love to see him just go with Arthur, because I've heard Arthur's an absolute pass master, a bit of a metronome. Not watched him, so I can't really go for him. <laughs> but yeah, Fernandinho and Casemiro, I agree. All right, I'll pick the three then. We'll go back down this way. Um, I think... Oh, this is where it gets hard. Neymar loves that left-hand side, doesn't he? Yeah. Coutinho floating as your number 10 and Willian on the right. I'd change Coutinho for Firmino just because I think Ooh. he's had such an outstanding season uh, with two players who had speeds as left to right of him. We can see what he can do. So we've seen sorry, what he can do. Mm. So I'd happily have him just behind the striker. Still not bad, Zach. I think I'm going to go with James just because then I put Jesus up front. 
and those two can interchange. Oh, it's not. It's a, it's a mad front line, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's I mean, you could have Douglas Costa in there as well. He's not yeah. an out and out forward, is he? I think he's registered as a forward in their squad. Uh, you've got Luan. Uh, Richarlison's down here, I think he'll get a game. Um, yeah, Firmino for me, a bit more of a false nine than a ten. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only reason I've gone for Coutinho. Mm. And I think, yeah, Coutinho is just a much better footballer. Makes things tick, could even drop a little bit as well if they're, if they're under pressure. Uh, I think, are we all going Gabby Hayes? Oh, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. We've Good picked God. a potentially World Cup winning Brazil <laughs> XI. Who do you think TA should go for? And who do you think are Brazil's biggest opponents in the tournament? England. <laughs> Big up, three lines. Last but not least, it's time for our match preview where we pick the biggest game of the weekend. And this time round, we've selected Marseille versus Lyon on Sunday at 8 p.m. It's a big one, lads. Mm -hmm. It's a battle for Champions League football between these two prestigious sides. They both scored, amazingly, the same amount of goals this season, 59, and conceded the same amount, Christ. 34. They both have identical records over the last four games going into this competition. However, Marseille progressed in the Europa League, mm -hmm. Lyon crashed out. However, James, Lyon also <laughs> earning 1.9 points per game on the road this season. So must be fairly confident in that. Quick score cast. That means score and first go goal scorer. All right, I go for 2-1 Torvan, Marseille. Ooh, 3-2 Marseille, Payet. Ooh, heard it first, get your bets on. <laughs> Ooh, Payet has been in good form this season, hasn't he? I think I'm gonna go for Lyon. 2-1, just to mix oh things God. up. Get your score predictions at us on Twitter, and if you get it right, along with the first goal scorer, not just a generic scoreline, then we'll give you a shout out, we'll herald you on Euro Roundup, because no doubt this will feature, unless it's nil-nil, which renders all of this pointless. <laughs> so, lads, end board, let's finish the show. Oh. What else is on different channels in the Football Daily Universe? James, Football Daily. Uh, FTFC, I'm going to go to actually. Oh, right, fair yeah. Right. Non league vlog. Orders, so. Me and Michael, who's uh, in Africa at the moment. Oh. Visited Dulwich Hamlet, who are in dire need of some support right now. So, Topical. Yeah, yeah clue yourself up about Dulwich Hamlet. It's, it's pretty important, to be fair. But yeah, tomorrow, uh, make sure you give it a watch. Well, Football Daily, Sunday, Sunday vibes, Friday, VFN, Saturday, a top 10. What more could you want? Enjoy your weekend, have a good one, follow us on Twitter, hit us up, peace out. See ya.